Welcome campers, it's basic training boot camp for your cash. All the things you're supposed to know about managing your money, but no one ever taught you. Here's your host, Steve Noviello. Welcome back campers, my guest today, uh, Daphne Dans, Managing Director of i uh, Dallas. Uh, tell me about the company. First of all, welcome. Thank uh, you. And next, uh, the company, you guys kind of tackle all kinds of different um, issues for folks. Yes, we uh, manage all aspects for everyone. We, uh, we see uh, people with medical, physical, psychosocial, financial attributes of, attributes of life. Um, we also deal with um, family members with children with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to plan for our children. We're not going to be around forever to take care of them. Yeah. So we also deal with a lot with the elderly and disabled, go being into going into transition phase of life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the topic we're talking about today is really kind of a and and it, it caught my eye because I don't think it's something that we give enough attention to. And this it's this idea of how do we help seniors and their families deal with financial decline. So let's kind of start there. What is meant by that? What what do you mean by financial decline? Financial decline meaning. Um, uh, most of our seniors right now, uh, due to the economy, we, they're working hard. We see seniors there in the 70s, 80s. They're still working. If mm -hmm. you go to Walmart and you see their greeters at the door, sure. so not just because they're retired, it's because a lot of them, they still can't afford to live um, on their own. Financially, prescription medication is actually a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, they need their medication to live. So all of that, it takes into account besides their mortgage, the regular bills, mm -hmm. but medical bills uh, is also a big thing. With them. We like to think that when we do see somebody in their 80s working, that, oh, well, it's just so that they are being, they're being social, they're just kind of filling their day. But the reality here is that these folks are working because they need the money. Oh, yes. Um, it's very hard right now with this economy. And now we're at the age of the baby boomers. Mm -hmm. And also we have all this, um, the millennials coming mm -hmm. out and everything. And economy has risen, every gas prices are high, everything yeah. is very high. So, you know, they have to live day to day. And prescriptions, I mean, you could, you know, the basic prescription, you know, um, something for their diabetes could cost them over $100, $200. Then, you know, not a lot of seniors know that they can't apply for, me they get Medicare, but they, they can't apply for Medicaid before a certain amount of time sure. at age of 65. There's a cutoff time where they can't apply for it. So they can't get the remaining 20% paid off. And you know all that is a lot very cost effective, and these are things that you do need in order to to survive. You know, I think that for a lot of people who my interactions with seniors and and really those who care for seniors is um, you know again, especially people in the in their 80s. I mean, you're talking about kind of this baby boomer generation uh, who, when something when a problem is solved, we no longer have to worry about it. So you kind of run into this idea of well, I'm feeling better. I really can't afford this medication, so clearly I can just st stop taking it, right? And without realizing, well, the reason why you're feeling better, of course, is because you know, you're on the medication to begin with. And these are also incredibly self-sufficient. This is a very self-sufficient generation of people. There may be a little hesitation there to say to a younger family member, hey, I can't manage my finances anymore. A lot of times people don't realize that they need help or they do realize they need help and their pride takes over. Sure. And also now what we need to realize with our um, elderly and seniors um, as their family members or children is that we need to watch out for them because there's a lot of scammers out there that's able to give them a call and basically get them out there, yeah. you know, get the money out of them. And they ask for a lot of money and sometimes they're very convincing. Yeah, I would say probably between 60 and 70% of the calls that I get from people are senior citizens who have fallen for some sort of scam. give me your money scam, you know, in whatever. In yes, whatever. now they have the I, the ones calling saying they're the IRS. And, sure. And then now they also have the ones saying, hey, your grandchild is in another state. Right, and, in an accident and, of and some an accident, sort. Or, or they've been arrested, send mm -hmm. bail money. So there's been a lot of those phone calls. And the these predators out there, and they're really taking very, very terrible advantage yeah. of them. Yeah. And it's, we have to, as their family members, we really have to work, work as an them. advocate for them really exactly. you know and and you you say that really step one there is recognizing the signs of financial decline so if I have a family member who's maybe uh, getting on in their years what are some of the red flags I should be looking for that hey maybe this person needs some help some past due bills is one um, their medications uh, a lot of it is medication like is declining they're not taking their 
prescription. Oh, I don't, they couldn't afford it um, this month. There's plenty of different signs. You could, um, even when you go home you, um, to visit your parents and next thing you know, the house used to be very- Orderly, up, orderly yeah, sure. Orderly, upkept, and now yeah. it's very, you know, not just because physically or um, there they can't take care of it, but they actually let things fall through right. the cracks because they can't afford to have sure. it fixed. You know, interestingly, you know, you were talking about you know inability to pay bills. Also, conversely, we hear a lot of times from people who say, you know, my elderly mother overpays her but keeps on paying the same bills over and over again you know she doesn't have grocery money and it's because well you paid the light bill three times because you forgot that you had already paid it they're not keeping track of right. it and um, that's why it's best for a lot of times for um, elderly to, have, to be to see a financial advisor so it's a difficult conversation to have i would imagine you know especially for somebody i know for me my parents are my dad is in his very early 70s my mom's in her late 60s they've always been kind of rocks of financial advice and financial prudence and, and whatnot and and i just watched with their parents you know who once were like that you know they kind of had to take over their finances how do you begin that dialogue with somebody to say hey i think that you might need some help here particularly when we're dealing with a generation of people who may be hesitant to ask for that help um, as you said about, you know, um, the elderly paying their light bill or sure. um, three times, you know, um, once you notice the signs, I just feel like it, it's, a, it's, it's a family member. It's not a coworker or anything mm -hmm. like that. Just say, you know, mom, I've noticed that, you know, you kind of paid this uh, at least two, three times. Um, do you actually need help for me to remind, help you remind paying the bill mm -hmm. or if you could make a... A sheet for them. Sure, yeah, you like know, a checklist of some a sort. A checklist of some sort. If once it's paid, sign, um, you know, check mark, you know, date it was paid, or if they want, you know, give you access to right. it. But a lot of family members do not trust their other family yeah. members to do that for it's them. It's unfortunate, to, sure. Because sometimes um, predatory behavior comes from family members. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like between a rock and a hard place, and that's where I, I core kind of comes in and assists with that because we are kind of like the biased third party. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. yeah, sure, kind of the middleman there. I would also imagine that there's kind of a fine line between saying to somebody, hey, I'm here to help you, and them hearing a message of, hey, you are completely incapable, um, exactly. and, 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 and that could be insulting to somebody. Exactly. Um, so uh, even the idea, perhaps, of, you know, just coming, hey, you know what, I'm going to um, start managing this or uh, quite honestly if your if your family members are old enough um, taking on that responsibility and paying the bill because they might not notice that they're not getting it anymore mm -hmm. you know and as long as as long as the lights are on so so the idea first of all obviously observe uh, which is what you Very had mentioned right so. to figure out okay what actually is going on here you know I, I often find sometimes that the best way to make sure that the person I'm talking to understands what it is that I'm talking about is to have them kind of repeat that. Yeah, I was about to, to say, right? have a, you know, <laughs> so when you're having that conversation with them, you know, and say, hey, you you know, this is this is how it's all supposed to work. Mm -hmm. t tell me, you know, show me that you kind of understand that. Yeah, just kind of have them repeat it to you and kind of explain it to you in layman's term. You know, like, can you explain that to me? Um, as if I was a six year old mm -hmm. that you're trying to have them explain and yeah. understand something. The, the um, you know, again, and, and I, 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 I hate to keep on coming back to this point, but I think it's such an important one. When we're talking about this generation in particular, who didn't grow up with, you know, anybody can very easily represent themselves as something there's not, and anybody could make something sound tr more true than it is, or, to, you know, I mean, these people come from a generation of integrity uh handshake deals very trusting you know, very trusting very you know not this and technology kind of has outpaced unfortunately that way of you know that kind of handshake way of doing business that i think a lot of them are used to so i think that for some folks that are seniors it may be even difficult for them to understand that when you get a letter from somebody uh, even though it's on there's a letterhead and a very official looking document that this is actually not from any sort of legitimate um, company it is it it's a very hard thing to really explain to them it's even hard for people our age sure to understand what's real or not because we get people our age get scammed all the time uh, of course. also yeah so it is a little bit harder for a senior 
um, to who grew up in integrity, handshake, and everything else mm -hmm. to actually go and believe that. That's why it, I, um, I don't know if you could get your parents to under, to speak with them to, hey, can you look at this, um, speak to your children, can you look at this letter for me and let me know if mm -hmm. you think it's legit? Yeah. If you're, you're gonna, if should I send the money? Is this an actual bill? Mm -hmm. And there's also, you know, even though there's a phone number, you can't trust that phone number. You know, there's it's funny with, 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 you know, when we talk about that, you know, when even something like homestead exemption in Texas, you know, when you buy a house here, you know, you get tons of mail from, you know, oh, send us a hundred dollars, we'll get your homestead filed for you. And it looks like it's from the county. And if you've never bought a home in Texas before, regardless of what age you are, mm -hmm. you think, oh, okay, well, this must be how it works. I send you a hundred dollars. And meanwhile, you have no idea that you just go onto the internet and click a couple of keys and boom, it's done. And of course it's, you know, it's free. Um, so I, I think that there is that same um, kind of mentality and danger, you know, with, uh, with seniors um, specifically, um, is there a point at which the uh, you just kind of have to come in and just kind of take over? Yes, there is. Um, this is when sometimes you actually have to put your foot down, or else your family member is going to end up on the street. Right. Um, you have to. Uh, you have to eventually be aggressive, a little bit aggressive about it, but you know, in a loving way. Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you. Have them meet with a financial advisor. They, they may not want to listen to you, mm -hmm. but they will listen to someone um, from a third, uh, from yes, an outside right, source. Sure. Um, you know, have them bring out, um, have all their bills out and their bank statement, and you know, the person could review them and let them know. It's like you know, you're actually overpaying on this, or you, you're not paying enough on this, and they will listen to an outsider before they listen to your family members because you know they always think that we don't know anything. You know, it's funny that you say that. I, I would agree. I think that sometimes um, you're exactly right. You know, you're you're kind of used to being able to kind of have that, that dance with a family member that may or may not end in an argument, and then you know. Some, somebody eventually you know, surrenders and that's that and then you just have to address the problem another time. But I do think that you're right that sometimes that idea of, well, hey, this is a complete stranger telling me you know, hey, this is a problem. Exactly. Um, and that's really what your company does, what ICOR does. So there are these personal needs coordinators. So when yes. we're talking specifically about finances for seniors, what is it that you guys do when you step in? Well, what we do is um, our personal needs coordinator actually goes in and does a full evaluation of the um, of the person and their home. We actually go to them. We don't, you know, you don't come to us. We go sure, to yeah. you. Um, we look at your medical, financials, your medication. We also have a registered nurse that goes out there and look um, look it over sometimes and to see if you know if you can actually stay home and be independent mm -hmm. or you may need a help with assisted living and if that's the case we could help you put your home for sale mm -hmm. we have a realtor come out do assessment if you need um, we could um, have a um, estate sale and all your financials go into um, goes into a trust mm -hmm. and we help you find a, a place to stay and help you with insurance getting make sure making sure your Medicare Medicaid everything is in order uh, in order to have everything taken care of yeah. as you transition and we follow up with you and we make sure uh, our personal needs coordinator goes in and make sure everything is okay and if you can't stay at home then we we will do the pay bill paying for you online gotcha and you know and that's also what um, along working with a financial advisor so basically if I know all your bills or needs, um, all your bills for the month will be two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Your financial advisor will give us access to just that two thousand right. dollars and making making sure that all your bills and everything lines up, and also that the money will last you to your remaining days. Yeah, sure. And also, you know, we have your will, power of attorney, yeah. everything taken care of for you. So really, and, and in the interest of transparency here, none of these things that you've just mentioned are are something that a family member couldn't do, but I would imagine the point here is that some folks don't have people in their lives to do these things. They don't have people in their lives, or the people that do have someone in their lives that could do all that with everybody else with their life, you know, they have sure. children, yep. they have their own personal life, and, and it's hard to focus on your family member. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it, you know, it's hard for me to all the time know exactly what's going on with my mother all the mm -hmm. time. Now, now that I'm paying someone to do that for me, yeah. I know she's okay medically, financially, psychosocially. I know she's taking all her medications. I know she's going to the doctor's appointment. We also provide that, mm -hmm. and we also send them to the doctor's appointment with a registered nurse and if transportation is needed we'll take that we have transportation provided for them mm -hmm. also so basically 
we're there to help your family uh, member out and you you know they, they could stay home and they could stay at home and age gracefully or we could help them transition sure yeah and again you know obviously the you know, the checklist that we're talking about if you are blessed enough to have people in your life to do these things great um, what do you think though that the biggest uh, mistake that people make uh, as they're watching their kind of their parents maybe transition into this next phase of their lives is a lot of time um, frustration. It causes a lot of arguments mm -hmm. and disagreements at home mm -hmm. um, with their marital or other family. Sure, you know it, it's a very very stressful situation. It, uh, you could start off with the best intentions and you may fall through the cracks and things start falling by the wayside, and they still won't get the 100% care that they're needing in order to maintain that independence or mm -hmm. help them transition because mentally our family members tend to deteriorate also. Sure. You know, I would imagine even uh, kind of on the flip side that perhaps a mistake people make is um, really kind of being hesitant to step in and maybe waiting too long. And then finally, once they do sit down and have that conversation with mom and dad it's or whoever, late. I mean, it's just such a mess. It that, is, you know. Yeah, and then you're pulling your hair out because you're right. stressed from your personal side of your family situation, and then you, now you're extra stressed out with your your mother or your father or mm -hmm. whoever that your your aunt and uncle, whoever mm -hmm. your paternal parent is, and it's it's very difficult to take care of adults that that's been taking care of themselves all the time. You know, and I think that in situations like this, we kind of look for the big elephants. Mm -hmm. And I know that for me, kind of watching my parents care for their parents, you know, as toward the end of their lives, it really is more the ants, not the elephants, right? It's the, I mean, one of my grandmothers, you know, she's, you know, no longer, no longer around. But toward the end there, it was the you know, recurring magazine subscriptions mm -hmm. or the, I put cash in an envelope because an envelope came and I, you, you know, it just it sent off. it away or I just, whatever the case is. I mean, all, and you, you know, and, and we kind of like look at that and, you know, ha ha. Um, but especially for somebody on a fixed income, those things really add up. You oh know? yes, very much so because they get a certain amount of money per month and you have to stretch it out till the first of next month. Mm -hmm. And uh, that money, once you're sending out money to envelopes or um, just giving, you, you know, they're giving away the money, it's, it's really hard because then, you know, the children have to step in, the family member have to step sure. in and pay for that. Yeah, where can people find i if they want more information? Um, i could be found, well, i Global um, Dallas, okay. uh, i .com dash, um So they're kind of city specific as well. This is a national company. It's a national company. We have um, 63, um, 63 territories in okay. tw um, 23 states. Um, you could contact i Dallas at 214-892-0799. Are you guys on social media as well? Yes, we are. Um, we have um, Facebook okay. and Instagram, and you can find us at iCoreGlobal.com. Perfect. Again, uh, Daphne Dance, we certainly appreciate it. Observe, ask, assist, uh, looking for signs of financial decline for senior citizens. We appreciate your time. Hey, remember, if you enjoy our podcast, be sure and leave us uh, a great review on iTunes and at the Google Play Store. We'll see you soon. Get all of our basic training episodes on iTunes and for Android, or listen right now at fox4news.com slash basic training.